In this video, we're gonna talk about how to specify the super air meter. My name is Tyler Lay, and I'm a concrete freak. You can find out more about the super air meter by watching some of my previous videos, which I'll link to below. And also, you can find it at the test method explained in detail at ashtotp118 or at this website, superairmeter.com. So why would you ever wanna specify the super air meter? Well, I've talked about this in a lot of previous videos, but just to recap, most people care about the bubble spacing inside their concrete. And one way to measure that is by something called the spacing factor. That's where you cut concrete and polish it and you count the bubbles on the surface. In this graph, we're plotting the spacing factor here on the y-axis. And on the x-axis, we're plotting the super air meter number, the SAM number. And most experts agree that the spacing factor you want is 0 0.008 inches. It's kind of a mythical number. And in the super air meter, if we want the same number, the same agreement, we find we need a SAM number of 0 0.20. This does a great job of these 227 mixtures of separating them into the no quadrant, I don't want this, and the yes quadrant, yeah, I'm excited about this concrete. This is for 227 mixtures, there's about an 88% agreement. That means 88% of the time, the data falls into this quadrant or this quadrant. And this is from my research group and also from the US Department of Transportation. But bubble spacing isn't everything. Free thaw durability is also really important. In this plot, we're showing the SAM number on the x-axis and we're showing performance in the rapid freeze thaw test on the y-axis, the ASTM C666 test. And in the upper left-hand corner, that's the yes, the recommended, and the lower right hand, that's the no, that's not where we wanna be, okay? And I call this lovingly, this number here, the cliff of doom, right? And this is about a SAM number of 0.32, that's when failure starts to happen. And of these 98 mixtures, this cliff of doom, this 0.32 number, separates them to 91% agreement. That means it does a good enough job that 91% of the time things fall into the yes quadrant or the no quadrant. That's pretty good. So in summary, if I wanna look at my SAM limits for a spacing factor of 008, I want a SAM number of 0 0.20. And for failure in the free saw test, I want a SAM number of 0 0.32. You're like, whoa. Why are they different? Well, people know we don't want to live on the edge of danger. We want to be away from the edge. We need a safety factor. And so historically, people have been using a safety factor of a spacing factor of about 0 0.008, or that would put you at a SAM number of 0 0.20. And where failure starts to happen is about 0 0.32. And I'm going to round that to 0 0.30 for our specifications because it's a nice round number and it's a little bit conservative. If we compare the SAM number to these other measurements, as in the spacing factor, or the performance in the rapid freeze thaw test, I'm actually showing the coefficient of variation. That's a way a lot of people use to compare tests to one another, to see how variable they are. And we'd like that number to be as low as we possibly could. And it is what it is. For 170 different SAM numbers, we found the coefficient variation was about 15%. The published coefficient variation for the spacing factor is about 20%. And for the rapid freeze thaw test is about 22%. So the SAM number is lower variance than these other tests. The other great thing about the SAM is it can be completed in 10 minutes when the concrete is still wet when you can still make changes to it. That's a real advantage. You really must understand how variable your test method is. That's critical in how you set your limits or your bounds. So we can handle this in how we specify our concrete and design it. And ladies and gentlemen, we should be doing this with all of our tests. So in Ashto PP84, which is a really cool document, which I will link to down below, it has a document that talks about SAM specifications. This is a new document that actually covers the durability of paving concrete. And in the mixture design stage, 
we suggest that a SAM number should be less than 0.20 and your air content should be greater than 4%. In the mix design stage, like in the lab, when you're putting all the materials together, you should make sure that your SAM number is 0.20 or lower at your working air content, at the air content you expect to use in the field. And then in the field, we're gonna change things a little bit. We're gonna loosen things up because we don't need it. We, we know the variability. We know where the edge of the cliff is. We know where the cliff of doom is. And we're gonna stay away from that. Let me show you what I'm talking about. If our SAM number is less than 0.25, accept the concrete. It's just fine. It's okay. And the large majority of the time, that's where you should be. Sometimes you'll be between a 0.25 and a 0.30. That should be an action limit. That should be something where the contractor increases the air content on the next truck. Increase the air, SAM number should go down. And then, but accept the concrete and place it. Then if your SAM number ever gets above 0.30, reject the concrete because remember that's the cliff of doom and your air content always has to be greater than four percent this spec is designed to get people in the right place during the mixed design so that they it will set them up for success when they go and use this in the field and then again we'll give them a little bit of wiggle room to still accept concrete when it's gonna be okay, but ask them to increase the air content when we get close to our limits. One question people always ask me is, Tyler, how do I improve my SAM number? Well, if you've got a truck and it's on the job site and it doesn't have the SAM number you want, just about the only thing you can do is add an air and training admixture to the truck usually with the Fritz pack, those things you throw in the back of the truck and they dissolve and you mix it up to increase the air content. That's about the only lever you have when you have a truck on site. However, if you go back to the mixed design stage, pay special attention to your mixture ingredients. Some of those in there are causing you trouble and you need to figure out which one it is. Also, it could be your construction process. It could be how the concrete is hauled, how it's treated, something else that's happening to it. So it depends on where you're at. All these things can impact the SAM number, but guess what? The cool thing is you now have a tool to investigate it. You're not chasing your tail as much. You can start to figure out what's real and what's not and get some real answers. Hey, thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate you. Give me a thumbs up if you like it. Leave me a comment below. Ask me questions. What are you worried about with the super air meter? What are you worried about in specifying it? Because there's lots of people that are starting to do it. And I think we can learn a lot from it. Take care, everybody. Bye.